Pedro from Imperial X, I'm here today with Eleni Nota of Nervosa to talk about the five drummers that influence her the most. How's it going? Great, great in here. And you? I'm great, I'm great. Thank you for taking the time to chat with me. Thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. I, I always enjoy watching your, your videos of you drumming on, on Instagram. You kick ass. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. It's so much fun to just watch you just drumming and, 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 and just beating those skins up. And I, every time you post a, a video, I'm always quick to go check it out because I, I just have fun watching you because you look like you're having a blast. So the energy, the fun that you're having, it transports itself into the video and it's fun for me to watch it. So just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Uh, thank you so much. And it means a lot because uh, I love your channel. I've been following your work for years. So it means a lot. Thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Before we start talking about these five drummers that really influenced you, let's go back a little bit. Let's go back to when you were a little girl. Why the drums? And, and how did your family react to the fact that you wanted to play drums? Uh, okay, so let's take it from the start. Um, you know, I didn't grow up uh, with music uh, around much because I'm not coming from a musical family. So I didn't see any relative playing an instrument or something. Uh, so when I turned seven, my mother asked me if, if I want to go to a music school and learn an instrument. And, you know, I know some of my classmates were playing piano. Uh, they said, okay, I'm gonna learn piano because I, don't, I didn't know that any other instrument existed. I only knew piano, guitar, and violin existed back then. So uh, she took me to piano lessons and I hated it big time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right away, I hate this. <laughs> yes, I didn't like it at all. Uh, my teacher was all for classical music and opera. <laughs> what is this? I don't like this. But still, I, I tried to like it and to be better at it because my mother really enjoyed listening to me playing the piano. So I tried to make her happy for the next uh, three years, but then I got really really bored i i was i cannot take this anymore it's horrible i hate it um so after that i had a best friend at school and uh, i was still in elementary school and his older brother was a huge metal head and he had a band with his friends and for us he was like you know a rock star back then because he was the older guy that was playing the guitar and head banging so his older brother introduced us to sleep Note. And he showed us uh, some uh, videos of Clifford performing, and I instantly noticed uh, Joy Jordison, and I fell, uh, fell in love with the concept of drums. It was the first time that I saw drums in my life. And I was like, oh, what is this? I want to do this. You know, hitting and noise, this for me. Uh, so I then went to my mother, and I said to her, OK, I'm stopping the piano. I hate this think not doing this again and I want to learn drums my mother was in panic <laughs> uh, <laughs> I can imagine and, uh, like, you go from yes. being like a, a pretty little girl playing the piano nicely in front of your mother you know whatever mom I want to headbang and play drums that's quite the the shock yes she was really miserable uh, when she heard the news and she tried to convince me she brought me a bass guitar at home she tried to convince, uh, convince me to play this uh, i was nope nope not doing this <laughs> she brought me some percussion you know some uh, bongos and stuff no they take them back i don't i don't want this and after two years i was uh, you know i was uh, such strong opinion he is, uh, it took me two years to convince her uh, but I wasn't changing my mind. So after two years, at the age of 12, she finally gave in and they took me to music school to learn the drums. So that was it for me. It was like a love at first sight, let's say, or, or a love at first hit. <laughs> yes. What, what, a, what a crazy, crazy journey. I mean, that's, that's quite the story you have there. From, from <laughs> you know, the piano, they try to show you the bass and you're like, you know, like bass players are not cool. I want to be the drummer. 
<laughs> I just wanted to make noise. And after many years, my mother showed me some pictures that I took when I was a toddler, like three or four years old. And I was playing drums on pots. Like I was taking, you know, stuff from the kitchen and I was hitting them. And I, I didn't remember that. She showed me the photos when I became an adult. So I think I had it in me, but I didn't even know it back then. Oh, wow. Wow. So you, you, you just, it was a hidden, uh, a hidden talent that you had from a very early age. I mean, if you're playing with the pots and stuff, you were, you were destined I to be know, a drummer. I don't know about talent, but it shows that from a really young age, I <laughs> like hitting stuff. Thankfully not people, but I love hitting stuff. <laughs> at, at what point, once you start playing the drums uh, on a more regular basis, once you left the piano, by the way, can you still play the piano? I. I continued to play a bit, uh, but not that much. Uh, when I went in, uh, to high school, I kind of got interested again and I started playing again for a couple of years, but more as a hobby. I was trying to play, you know, movie soundtracks I liked on piano. Still, just to uh, clear this, I love the piano as an instrument to listen to it, still, not classical music though. <laughs> But I love the piano and I love watching people play the piano, but I don't like playing the piano. I just know I don't like my body doing this. I prefer the drums. So I occasionally, occasionally I still play. I have still my old piano in my house, but drums is all the way for me. <laughs> so once you start playing the drums on a regular basis, how, how long did it take you to, to feel like uh, you know, th this is the, the right fit for me. Like, like maybe one day I can do this at a higher level. Like I can be in the band. I can be like that guy that I knew from high school that was really cool headbanging with his guitar. Like at, at what point did you feel like that you could get there? Uh, it took some years. Uh, when I started uh, taking the drum lessons at 12, uh, I saw it uh, only as a hobby. Uh, I didn't play that much. I was interested in PlayStation and skateboarding in that age. So I didn't invest much time on drumming. And also because my family, all of them, you know, went to university and did, you know, one is a teacher, one is a nurse, one is song. I, I had this idea that I have to go to university, study, get a degree and get a really nice job working somewhere, you know, and getting my money like this and music is just a hobby. But uh, so I just had this view that I have to be good at school and finish school and stuff and drums is on the side. But when I turned around 15 or 16 and uh, the final exams of, of school were just two years ahead and I started thinking what I'm about to do with my life. I realized I hate everything apart from drums and music. Uh, I, I didn't like school much. Even though I was studying, I hated school. I, I, I didn't want my future to be studying something I don't like. So one day I just found the courage to say to myself, okay, you're gonna be a drummer. <laughs> So you're gonna take this seriously. You you'll start um, practicing, and from that day, I just didn't stop playing. I was playing uh, four hours in school days and eight hours in weekend on weekends. Wow. So yeah, we, uh, with having school and uh, you know getting English degrees and everything at the same time, so it it was a great schedule. But I became really committed when I decided to do it. It took some time for your mother to buy you the drums, two years for you to convince her. But when, when, when she looks at you now, today, uh, I'm sure she's proud of, of what you've become. Have you had those conversations? <laughs> <laughs> have, have you had any of those conversations? Or does she still tell you that, you know what, there's still time for you to become a nurse. You can still go back to school and become a nurse. Oh, yes, she's saying this all the time. Uh, she, she's kind of proud when she sees videos of me playing, but still she doesn't like the general idea of music because I, uh, when I turned 18, I actually went to university. I gave in and uh, I, get, I went to university to study mathematics. And at the same time, I was getting my degree on drumming, but I dropped out of university 
because I became really miserable really quickly. Yeah, trying to fulfill your parents' dream instead of yours, it's, um, it can be miserable sometimes. So yes, Ansik became quite disappointed when I dropped out of ma uh, mathematics. And still sometimes he's telling me, oh, what if you got your degree? And what if you were working at the school right now? So you know, parents are like this, especially those who were not into music. But still it's a supportive the school. The school. <laughs> yeah, parents could be like that. Uh, I, I, you know, uh, I heard it from my parents and now I'm a parent too. So I could totally see that. The next step in the evolution of your mother will be asking you, when are you going to get married and having kids? So get ready for- Oh, so it's doing this already. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, she, she's ahead of the curve. She's ahead of what I thought. I thought you still had like another five years or so. Turns out that oh, no, she's not no, wasting no. any time. <laughs> yes, see, uh, she believes I have to do this before I turn 30. So yes, she's already asking this. Just put the, the volume of the drums really loud so you don't hear her when she's talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, That's well, a good can... idea, yeah. You, you can you can drown her and say, "Mom, I can't hear you right now. I'm doing something. I can't hear you later, later." And then just keep just keep pushing it. <laughs> Thankfully, we don't live together, so I hear this only through the telephone. So that's something. <laughs> so there's some positives. There's some positives. Now, as far as your five most influential drummers, you mentioned Joy Jordison of Slipknot, formerly of Slipknot, as as perhaps the the first drummer that you saw. So what was it about, let's start off with him because he's, he's, the, he's the first guy that you mentioned already and perhaps the first one that really got you to pick up the sticks. What was mm -hmm. it specifically about him that got you hooked into drumming? Was it his style, the sound, the band, the, the, the drum kit moving around? Like, <laughs> Yeah, uh, the drum kit moving around is still iconic. I still want to do this someday in my life, <laughs> but... <laughs> I think it was a combination of everything because when you're a kid and you see something for the first time, everything makes a huge impression on you. So the you know his style because his playing is so raw. If you see him playing live shows, uh, the sound is so raw. He just hits everything with a passion. But I like that his drumming is not uh, predetermined let's say uh, he improvises his drum parts all the time on gigs and this is amazing because it looks that it comes from the heart and that's what touched me back then also the mask you know the whole attitude and also co uh, the combination of uh, of his playing with Slipknot music because I love Slipknot as the band do they're one of my favorite bands of all time so the badass music of Slipknot with uh, Joy on drums was the thing for me. And I still see Joy a lot in my playing. So he played a huge role in me evolving as a drummer. My feels sometimes are, you know, remind me of Joy and uh, my double bass work and stuff. I think I picked uh, all the stuff from Joy back then. Wow. So you had a deep impact, not just in, in making you uh, pick up those drumsticks, but also in, in your style and your own playing and, and how you approach a song. So th th those are some deep yeah. roots that stayed with you. Yes, and still I see some comments uh, in Nervosa's videos of me playing and people write, oh, she has this joy vibe. And I remember also me playing gigs um, with bands that were not that much metal. They were more rock oriented. And sometimes people were coming to me after the gig and they were saying, you look and sound like Joy sometimes. While I was playing rock, this was scary <laughs> <laughs> because I wasn't playing that much dub bass or something. So people were saying to me all the time, you remind us of Joy. Uh, so I think, I don't know if this is good or bad, but bad I mean because I don't want to copy someone, but... Um, yeah, Joy influenced me in everything, in everything. He's my uh, biggest inspiration of all time. I think everybody has, when you're a musician, you, you, you know, it's hard to reinvent something new. I mean, everything has been done. 
So you're always going to have something from somebody who was a huge influence. Then it, it all comes down to how you can then twist that around a little bit and becomes your own. I think that takes a little bit of time. So I think down the road, uh, you, you, the, the joy aspect of your drumming style will start to disappear and you'll become your own style. And then perhaps a little girl 10 years from now, 15 years from now, they're going to say to that little girl that you look like Eleni when you're playing drums. And that I think is the best compliment to you. Yeah, for sure. This, yeah, this will, this will be awesome. And I think it's, yeah, like this generation inspires the next generation. And exactly. It goes like exactly. this. So the next name on your list is Daniel Elderson from Arch Enemy. So what, when did you discover him as a drummer? And what was it about him that, that you like? I discovered Daniel a bit after I discovered Joy. So uh, he's my second inspiration, let's say. That's why I put him second on the list. Uh, yeah, I was still really young, 10, 11, somewhere, uh, uh, somewhere at, that, at that age. And um, yeah, I discovered that enemy by mistake. Because I was uh, really into symphonic metal back then, I was looking for bands with female singers, and I saw that Arch Enemy had a female singer, and I guess it was symphonic. <laughs> and <laughs> I can see where this is going. <laughs> and I, I typed on YouTube Arch Enemy, and you know, I, and I think the first song that came up was "We Will Rise" back with Angela back then. And they pressed on the video clip and Tansela started to sing. <laughs> wow, <laughs> this is a woman doing this. Wow. wow. I think it took me some minutes to <laughs> come out of the shock. And after that, I, and yeah, this was after Sleep Note, it was my second experience with a more extreme type of music with the extreme vocals. So I fell in love with Arch Enemy as well. Still, they are, they are one of my most favorite bands. So, yeah, and back then I, it was me discovering drums as well. So every drummer I saw on YouTube, I, you know, I checked him out a lot. And I saw Daniel and I started, you know, watching him and watching me even more. And um, I came around the drum solo of his. And here is my turn to say that I don't like drum solos in general. Uh, I'm kind of bored with them. I prefer to play on, on top of the music and try to compose drums on top of music. So I'm not a huge fan of drum solos in general, but there are some drum solos that really stand out to me. And Daniel's solos were the first ones to do this for me because his drum solos are extremely musical. It's like it's um, a whole musical arrangement when he plays and that's why i fell in love with his playing so much and i still see him as a big inspiration because when you hear his drum solo it's not just okay look what i can do i play so fast and yeah, look at not me not just flashy it's, yeah it's it's flashy at some point where it's needed but it has a start a middle and a finish mm -hmm. uh, and it has something to say and if you see what I saw on these YouTube videos of him playing drum solos, it's that the people on, in the crowd dance during his solos. And not if they don't just scream, they dance around and they create most fits. And you don't see that often during a drum solo. This means that he makes those people move. Uh, and this is huge for me. So stylistically, I, I love this guy. I look up to him big time. And if, I, uh, if I'll ever be able to achieve half of his musicality, I'll be extremely happy. Yeah, he's a great drummer. I, I, I'm, I'm with you on everything that you said about him. Uh, I, I like drum solos to a certain extent. If, 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 they, if they do something, if they feel like there's something there, if it's just a show off moment, then it kind of loses me quickly. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't, I, I don't I don't really attach myself to it, but if it has a little bit of consistency, if it feels like it's part of, of something much bigger, then then I'm into it. So I, I guess in the next Nervosa tour, the, the ladies are not going to leave the stage and leave you alone for five minutes for a drum solo. I guess that's not going to happen. Oh, actually, Prika asked me to prepare a drum solo. 
but and uh, actually the, uh, when this happened i went on youtube and i saw again all of daniel's solos just to remind myself how, why i love his drum solos and you know to have an inspiration to create mine i want to create mine like he's doing his own solos to, to have a purpose so i'm trying to figure out a musical way to play a solo if i get bored with it because i get really uh, really quickly bored with drum solos i will throw it away i i, I can see i can see you pulling it off it's just a matter of, uh, you're very driven so I, I can see you you creating exactly something that feels natural to you and it doesn't feel forced i hope i i will <laughs> the, the next name on your list is luke holland uh, i thought this was an interesting I, I thought this was a very interesting name uh i was not expecting it i'm going to be honest with you i was expecting perhaps Dave lombardo to be on the list but luke holland what about luke holland yes uh so luke holland is my biggest inspiration of right now, let's say Joey and Daniel are the oldest one. Okay. Uh, but I fell in love with Luke Holland's drumming uh, about two years ago uh, because I started getting bored with playing typical metal all the time because I did it for many years. And I was like, I want something else to try out something else and I, came across one of Luke's uh, drum covers of uh, Cinema by Skrillex, which is a really old one of his, but I saw it for the first time about two years ago, and I, I became extremely impressed by the combination of metal chops he has, but also with, you know, more fusion and gospel thing, uh, techniques he does. And then I looked up, uh, looked up a bit more about him, and I saw that he plays the drums for Jason Richardson, who's a huge guitar player. Mm -hmm. uh, and I listened to their solo album that they made together, and it was amazing because it has all this uh, musicality. You can hear metal inside, but also extreme shredding, then more quiet orchestral parts. It's extreme. And what I love about Luke Holland is his dynamics. He has a crazy control over his dynamics. Uh, and uh, he plays polar rhythms and you don't even understand it because he plays them so effortlessly and flawlessly that it's like it's something easy for him. And you think it's easy when you hear it, but then when you try to play it, it's a nightmare. So yeah, I I like. I like this about him. He has finesse. If I have to find one word to describe it, he has extreme finesse in playing. And I like that he's not a metal drummer or a pop drummer. He puts all these worlds together and he creates a unique style. Yeah, it has his unique flavor to it. Uh, let me ask you this, not necessarily about Luke Holland, but in general, because you, you said that you went to check out some of his videos and, and you're appreciating all the details and everything that he's putting into it. Are, are you a critical drummer, meaning that when you go to a show and there's somebody playing drums, are you like, eh, I could have done better. He, he th That's wrong. You shouldn't have done that. Okay, this guy's garbage. I I'm leaving. <laughs> <laughs> are you no, like that? No, 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 not in general. Uh, it depends. If the drummer is really, really bad, like horrible, horrible, you know, he cannot play a simple group straight. Okay, then I will say, okay, what the hell is going on here? But I think this has happened to me like once or twice in all these years. I, but apart from that, I know I love watching every drummer uh, because still if someone makes mistakes or something, you know, I've made so, so many mistakes during my life shows that I understand that people make mistakes. So I don't want to judge anyone. Because a live show is a live show, you're not playing in your room, it can be stressful. So, of course, you're gonna screw something uh, at some point. Uh, and yeah, you're gonna drop a stick, you're gonna hit a rim instead of a snare. These things happen. And I think that you can learn stuff from every drummer, from the most famous to the most unknown. You know, I, I go to local gigs and I see drummers that I've never, I never saw before. They may not be the most technical guys out there, but still they have something unique to show you. Someone has a great sound, another one has a great stage presence, another one, something else. So no, I love watching drummers and I try not to judge because 
I fuck up things too, you know, <laughs> occasionally. So I, I thought you would be like annoying to your friends. It's like, oh my God, this guy is horrible. I could do that a hundred times better. Give me the damn sticks. I'll go up there and I'll show them how it's done. And your friends are like, oh my oh. God, you're always like this. <laughs> no, no, no. Actually, I, the only times I've done it is whether the drummer was really, really bad, but this doesn't happen often. And even, ah, uh, okay, I can do this if I know the guy personally and I don't like him, you know, like his character. Uh, then I may be a bit more judgmental than usually <laughs> just because I don't like this guy. So if, even if he plays well, I still don't like him. So it's okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't like him. <laughs> Yeah. You're, 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 you're keeping it honest even even if he plays well i don't like him so therefore he's shit yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> so the next name on your list you have chris turner of oceans eight alaska uh a really different style drummer i mean so far all four of them you know you're going into a field where the drummers are starting to becoming a little bit more unique within their own style and then within their own approach mm -hmm. they all are but Ocean's Eight Alaska with Chris Turner is, is a different sound, is a different approach. Yes. Uh, so, uh, Ocean's Eight Alaska. I'm not a huge fan of this band. I, I like metalcore really much, but and uh, they're a great band, but no, they're not that quite my cup, cup of tea, let's say. But uh, so I like Chris Turner not as the drummer of the band, let's say, but as a persona. Him specifically, I may not listen to Ocean State Alaska every day, but I I watch Chris's videos probably every day. So, um, this drummer you're, you're, is you're more of a fan of him as a drummer than you are of him as yes. a drummer of that band. Yes, uh, does I'm not uh, you know saying something bad about the band. They're amazing. That's not yeah, my type like of, of tea. music. Yes, but Chris is like a robot. This uh, this guy is scary. Seriously, it's scary because uh, he plays so complicated stuff, but like extremely complicated stuff. I don't think a human being can actually play these things. And he plays them without any mistakes. It's uh, scary. And especially his double bass work, the control he has over his pedals, this is insane. Uh, like when I first saw him, I decided that he's. This is my new goal in life to have this control over my legs like this guy. I don't know if 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 it will be ever possible for me to do it like uh, this well, but he, it it was like a cool challenge. This guy inspired me to set a new goal for myself. Like I want more, more control over my legs and my hands. And um, also he has this uh, solo project right now where he's gone. He's releasing his solo EP and he has already released his first song of the EP called 40 Roll. And I was checking out this video. He's playing his extreme as always. Uh, but he wrote in the description that his goal with this EP was to record one take everything uh, without any editing, without any triggers, like physical playing all the way. And if you listen to the song, you imagine that it has 100. 100% editing because it's so flawless and that's how that he said that he didn't do any edits he didn't use any triggers any hit replacements and that was scary because a human being doing all this stuff without any technology used this is scary and after that i decided to try harder to be be better and do less uh, fewer takes at all of my recordings to be able to play the songs better in just one or two takes so it was like a new level for uh, i set a new level a new standard for myself just by watching Greece. so his discipline is what inspires me and also his extreme talent wow that's that's i'm blown away by the way you're describing it and, and the impact that he has had i, I mean it's pushing the bar for you it's elevating the bar yes. and it's really motivating you to be even better, uh, more perfect, more flawless at what you do. And that's always something that will allow you to improve as a drummer all around. So that's great. Like, that's really inc incredible. But uh, don't feel too bad if you can not reach that bar. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there's only one Chris Turner. I'm not saying you cannot be the next Chris Turner. What I'm saying is that you also can take uh, 
sometimes too much too much pressure and will hurt you somewhere else so you have to find a balance oh yes you're uh, you're right of course and um, it, yeah actually it can be unhealthy sometimes for me because i love challenges but to a way that it becomes unhealthy sometimes like i set crazy challenges for myself but yeah i try to be more easy with Eleni sometimes <laughs> yeah because it's kind of crazy for, for, me, uh, for me what do you do is already crazy because i i can't think of moving my two legs and my two hands at the <laughs> same time I, I i i don't know how drummers do it you guys make it look so easy and every time i go to a music store i sit down at one of those drum kits where you put the headphones and only you can hear what you're doing and I sound horrible. I sound like I'm I'm killing a cat or something. Like <laughs> I can only hit one thing at a time. If I try to hit two things at a time, it sounds I, I honestly, you guys have your brain wired completely different. <laughs> yeah, actually, it's like every instrument, you know, piano was really hard too. Like bass, soul, and guitar, they are all hard. It just takes crazy amounts of practice to do it. So I get. I get what you're saying. Yeah, it's just, you, you make it sound and look so easy. It's like, well, if she can do that, I think I can sit here and I think I can play something. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't, I, uh, I embarrass myself. The good thing is only I can hear it. So at least other people are not making fun of me. <laughs> yeah, that's the best thing, uh, thing about electronic drums. That's why they're so awesome about practice. No one can hear you screwing up everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So the the, ne the last name on your list is Krim of uh, Septic Flesh. Now, is yes. this is this a little bit of going close to home for you? Does that play a role in, in, in the impact that he has had or is all really about his style and, and how good he is behind the drum kit? Uh, you mean about home because the Septic Flesh are from Greece? Yeah, yeah, from that part of, of, mm -hmm. of your world. I no, actually, uh, because uh, Septic Place is one of my favorite bands, but when I first discovered them, uh, Creamy wasn't uh, the drummer back then. They had uh, another drummer called Jorge Fernando. He's an amazing drummer as well. I love his playing. Uh, they, they got Creamy as a drummer, I think it was seven years ago. So he was already into septic class, but and cream also is not from Greece, so I didn't know him as a Greek grammar. He's from Austria, I think. But I first discovered Creamy a long time ago when he started making YouTube videos and he was playing songs by Dimu Borgir and uh, Art Enemy and Slipknot. And he was one of the first guys that did metal covers on YouTube. So was huge for me because still I was a child. I was watching him getting it and I fell in love with his playing. But after he evolved so much, uh, if you see his first YouTube videos and what he does now, it's a complete different person. He then got into Decapitated and his drumming was insane with them, insane drumming. Um, and what I loved about him it was that he has this brute force over the drum kit because nowadays many drummers use triggers all over the place and it's not bad it's just technology you can use it of course but cream if you take out the trigger from his drums you you will still hear a lot of noise just he punches those kids like crazy he has to he make uh, makes such a huge sound out of his drum kit and He's also so fast, but also so articulate, and he has finesse, like Luke Holland. He has this amazing dynamic. He plays soft grooves, and then he smashes the drum kit again. And especially when he got into Celtic Class, the drumming he produced with this band was phenomenal. He also plays, uh, he's the studio drummer for one band that I love, Harakiri for the Sky. He's their studio drummer, and. I love his work in there. He also has solo albums that he wrote every, where he wrote everything, even the guitars and the bass. So I like his musician. musicality. Yeah, I love his musicality in general and also his sta stage presence. 
you know, when you see this guy play live, you notice him. Even even if you don't like drums, you notice this guy behind the drum kit. His uh, stage present is huge. The way he headbangs, the way he moves his arms, everything. He's a star of his own. I agree. I've, I've seen them live. And normally, every your attention is always towards the front, uh, the front person, the singer, uh, or the guitar player. That's n- normally where your eyes gravitate to when you're at a show. But he has such a, a large presence. He creates such a large volume of, of sound that, and he doesn't look discombobulated. He looks very fluid. Like he has multiple arms. You know, you know what I mean? Like yes. it, it, he's just for for he's touching things that he shouldn't perhaps be reaching to. Like it's just really really strange when you see him but it's at the same time it's so controlled and so fluid uh th- there's no exactly. there's no nothing abrupt uh, you know th- there's like energy going from one arm to the other and touching everything it's just uh and his legs really powerful as well so he, he's just an incredible drummer regardless if you're watching him live or if you listen to something that that he's work on he, he puts his stamp on it yes and always uh, also he's good with, uh, extremely good with educational stuff because he has collaborated um, with a drum channel uh, of Mar- Martin Jovanovic, if, if I'm saying them correctly. He has this extreme met- metal drum academy where Cream, um, you know, contributes as a teacher occasionally and he sends vi- edu- educational videos of him. And I watch them like a fanatic all of his educational videos. He, he gives this uh, awesome warm-up exercises and uh, how to improve your double bass drum or your blast beats. And he even gave tips in one of his lessons for you know, diet and exercise if you're a drummer, what is better to eat and what exercises to do. I mean, physical workout. So he's, he, helped me a lot uh, also with the educational background and how to become better at my instrument with his tips and everything. I have one, now we've gone through the list, I have one last question for you. Is there something in in the drum world right now, the way the drums are being played, the way the drums sound, that you don't like, that 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 you wish you could remove, or or you like the direction of where the instrument and the people behind the instrument are taking it? In general, I like it very much. I love the evolution of drumming nowadays. I'm addicted uh, to drums on YouTube. I watch everything that is uh, released. So I like what I see. If I don't, if I have to say one thing I don't enjoy it as much, is the excessive use of triggering. But that that, uh, that is just me. I don't mean it's wrong. It's just that I'm not a crazy fan of it. I like to use triggers, but I, you know, the less I can, I can use them, the better for me. I might use, use them for my bass drum on a huge stadium that has hundreds of people and I, they need to hear my bass drum, but I don't like triggers on toms or snares. I just like to make my own sound with sound. hitting as hard as I can. Yeah, because with triggers, you can relax a bit on the hitting part, but because I like hitting so much, <laughs> I prefer not to use them and having a more natural sound. I think you're thinking of your mother forcing you to play the piano every single time. So you're hitting it harder and harder. The, the memories, <laughs> you're, you're going through those memories of your mom telling you to play the piano. Yeah, I think, I think I'm envisioning me hitting the piano. <laughs> 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 yes, maybe, maybe that's true. You're, you're envisioning yourself hitting the piano with a sledgehammer. <laughs> yes, that would be, you know, iconic. I would love to do this at some point <laughs> in my life. <laughs> you know, sometimes the guitar players, they smash the guitar after the set. So maybe you can bring a little Casio onto the stage and then smash the Casio at the end of the show. <laughs> this is an awesome idea. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be really funny and people would have no idea what's happening. Why is she breaking the keyboard? Like what, what did the keyboard do to her? So uh, I think that would be really funny. <laughs> Actually, I, I will ask, uh, you know, Brick Amaral for a better budget <laughs> so we can afford the keyboard for me to smash. 
<laughs> I think it's a perfect idea. I love it. I love it. Well, Eleni, thank you very much for your time today. This was an absolute pleasure to have you on the channel. Thank you so much. Uh, it, it was so, so much, much fun. Thank you. I had fun as well. Thank you for having me. It was awesome. Oh, take care. All the best. You too. To you too. All the best. Bye bye. bye.